And um, do you know what? Over the course of being uh, fortunate enough to do this job, you get to meet loads and loads of really interesting people. But you get every now and again, you get someone sat opposite you, and you go, "Flipping it!" And I've got a flipping it moment coming my way because sat opposite me now is Charles Berry Jr. And you know, some of us have famous parents, but I think it's safe, safe to say, Charles, when it comes to having a famous dad, if your interest is rock and roll, you don't get any bigger than your old fella, do they? <laughs> well, Jimmy, okay, I'll take that as a, a true compliment. It is a compliment, uh, absolutely. And I do, uh, I, I appreciate that. Uh, dad was something else. He, he did make a lot of really fantastic music over his life. Um, I got to join his band and got to go all over the world. It was the best take your kid to work experience anyone could ever imagine. <laughs> take your kids to work. <laughs> his dad is, of course, he, he can't even say rock and roll royalty. He is a colossus, described by Bob Dylan as the Shakespeare of rock and roll, the late, great Chuck Berry. Well, Chuck sadly died a few months ago, but he has got a new album out, and Charles plays guitar in it. So, Charles, tell us about the album first up. <clears throat> Jimmy, it's um, it's a 38-year effort by my father. Uh, after the record, um, Rocket was released in 1979, went back into the studio, started creating new music, created some really great music. Ten-year period goes by March or April of 1989, the bleeding studio burns to the ground. So all of his tapes... His, all of his recording equipment, everything lost. He gets to start over. He starts over in eh, about, yeah, 1991. It has a new studio built. But now, you know, and in, in this is to the musicians out there. Um, you know, you get something, you put it down, you get it recorded. But it's a lot of rec the recording process and making music in general is spontaneity so you you know a friend of mine maybe ken or another friend of mine dominic may just jump up in the middle of the night jump out of bed and start writing or they may just break the guitar out and start recording something because it's something that bam it hits them right now so my dad has lost all this music he's got to now go ahead and try and recreate as best he could in the midst of still being a you know a world touring uh, musician and other business interests that he had, so it took him a long time. But he wanted to make sure it was right. Now you play guitar on your dad's album. Seriously, as a guitarist, how if, if you if your dad's playing a song and you go, I'd play that a little bit quicker, Dad. How do you tell <laughs> Chuck Berry? I don't think we should do it like that, Dad. <laughs> well, you don't. <laughs> uh, no, but I mean, my dad was, he was open to creative criticism. So, you know, he took a lot of this stuff that as he worked over, the, in fact, from day one, from Maybelline forward, in many cases, he'd bring stuff back home and let my mom listen to it. And she'd say, he'd ask her, honey, how's it sound? So if there was something she didn't like, she was his best critic. She you know she loved him to death. So she would tell him, you know, if he did it like this or no, it's perfect, then he'd roll with it. Now, myself, no, it was, you know, he was the producer of all of his music. He knew what he wanted and he would lay this stuff down. So, so after this fire, Jimmy, my dad goes back into the studio. He has a drum machine, had his own bass, had his own, own uh, you know, piano. And he basically recreated all the rough edges of all this stuff himself. He then brought his, his uh, bass player, Jimmy Marcello, for over 40 years. And, okay, Jimmy, here's what I want. Get your jazz bass and put it together. Ingrid, here's how I want your vocals to sound. Hear the lyrics. Sing it for me. Bob, Bob Lohr, who was his keyboard player for 18 years. Here's the keyboard. You know, I can't play as good as you, Bob. Go do your thing. But then he would come back and say, okay, I'd like for you to change this. I'd like for you to change that. Boom. No, and I never, I just said, Dad, what you want me to do? <laughs> and I'll do just that. So to that end, uh, you know, when I started in this band, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't, I'm truly being, I'm being honest. I did not know how to play guitar. Didn't know any of that. Uh, he said, okay, well, we'll teach you. And they did. It was a slow, long process. But I'd start to try and teach myself some of my dad's lead work. And he said, no, 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 there'll be time for that. Right now, you just do your thing. When I, when I lean in, you just go and do your solos. 
Well, after he passed, well, the thing he said, and I think I just alluded to it, he said, you know, after I'm gone, you're going to have to keep this alive. Well, it, I'm going to need a lot of help. I've got two of my friends in the studio right, right now that are playing my dad's music as well. And that's what's going to really keep it alive is everybody else playing. But I started learning his, you know, now I am starting to learn his lead work. And it's not easy. Dominic can tell you it's not easy. Uh, he has a lot of tricks. A lot of tricks and traps that only he really knew how to play, uh, but it's been a it's been a joy and a lot of fun to learn it. What's it like having a dad that famous? Because ultimately, however famous he is, and he's up there in the absolute pantheon, but he's your dad, Charles. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, see, and, and Jimmy, you're one of the few that that have even phrased have, have asked the question the way you did. He was my dad first and foremost to myself, my sisters. He was my mom's husband first and foremost. Chuck Berry never came inside our house. It was always dad or honey, you know, between my mom and my dad. So, you know, he was famous, of course. You know, as a little kid, seeing him on television and it's like, well, I don't see anybody, any of my, you know, my <laughs> mate's friend parents on the telly so he's got to be kind of a wheel you know he must be some kind of big deal but he was dad he was just my dad man that is the perfect answer though it chuck berry never came in our house no he didn't he didn't the records did <laughs> but but no the person that everyone saw no he was he was the most down-to-earth guy you would ever imagine uh encountering you know people thought he was a mean guy and i was like no that's totally incorrect he was the one of the funniest one of the warmest one of the most loving people i ever met is your mother a, a very strong character then extremely you'd have to be to be married to chuck berry wouldn't you well but remember now it wasn't chuck berry you're, that you're was right yeah it was honey yeah it was honey honey's a pussy cat yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> exactly exactly yep Listen, I'm going to take a, a short piece of music while you catch your breath but can we talk a bit more before you dash off for your train absolutely When you're alone and life is making you lonely, you can always go downtown. When you've got worries, all the noise and the hurry seems to help, I know. Downtown, just listen to the music of the traffic in the city. Linger on the sidewalk where the neon signs are pretty. How can you lose the light so much brighter there?
for Hugh McClark in downtown BBC Radio Manchester. I'm having one of the best conversations of my life with Charles Berry Jr. I have a little bit more for Charles. Not an awful lot, unfortunately, because he's got to dash off and get a train to London as part of the media merry-go-round that he's doing. His dad's got a new album out. His dad sadly died a few months ago and his dad the absolute rock icon, rock and roll icon that is Chuck Berry. More with Charles in a couple of moments after the latest traffic and travel. BBC Radio Manchester, travel update. Sarah, I've got Charles Berry Jr. with me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you do the traffic. Thank you. M60 Junction 17, it's still a little slow as you're heading through towards the Eccles Interchange Junction 12. There was a problem on the opposite side of the carriageway, so I'm not entirely sure why it's still so busy there heading towards Manchester, because usually about now we're seeing traffic uh, a lot quieter than this, but uh, affecting the M61 as you're approaching through from the Kersey Spur at Junction 3. Oldham traffic's pretty slow on Broadway as you're coming off the A627M uh, and heading through Chatterton. We've got congestion still on the A6, particularly through Disley. It must be roadworks there slowing you down heading through from Whaley Bridge further towards Hazel Grove and we're on the move there approaching uh, the M60 at Stockport. The A34 Hanforth Bypass, that's Roadworks slowing things down at the Stanley Green Roundabout and Roadworks an issue for you on the A538 Wilmslow Road just between Morley Green and the M56. If you can help further please do give us a call it's 0161 228 BBC Radio Manchester. On the 23rd of June 2016, Britain voted to leave the European Union. Now 12 months on, BBC Radio Manchester hears from EU citizens living in the city. It was definitely a huge decision for me to move here. As I'm gay, I wanted to live in a place that has more liberal attitudes. Anna Geary. All this week I'll be speaking to people from across the EU, finding out what first attracted them to Manchester and what they hope their futures hold. BBC Radio Manchester. This is BBC Radio Manchester. I'm Jimmy Wagg, but much more importantly, he's Charles Berry Jr. And his dad, Chuck Berry, has got a new album out, Chuck. And it took a while to uh, hit the record shop. Have you had a first inkling of how people are responding to it yet, Charles? Uh, Jimmy, um, it's been unbelievable. Uh, I guess March 25th, somewhere in that time frame, Big Boys, uh, the first single was released. And it's been nothing but positive. It's it's been really incredible that for a guy that hadn't released anything in almost forty years, and you know, really stayed out of the public eye from the standpoint of you know not being on television shows, any of that kind of stuff, that people are just screaming. They're just going crazy for this thing. I own, I maintain my father's Facebook page, two million plus. Um, uh, followers and it's been pretty much 100% positive and then when the album was released oh it just went bananas the people have just gone crazy it's been nothing but positive fantastic have we got any more to come is there any more recording still to be released I'm giving you the face of <laughs> what's I'm, his face I, I, well it's the holding my cards close <laughs> face um because I've been asked that question too and and I'll answer it like this the future always tells the truth. Always. Oh, well, we'll go with that. Can I just ask you a couple of questions before I let you dash off? Sure. Everybody, and I mean everybody, when they cite their rock and roll influences, include Chuck Berry. Mm -hmm. Who does Chuck Berry listen to when he sat at home with your mum? <laughs> okay, so, my, you know, my dad was a depression era kid. So he grew up and, you know, he's born 26, so he's 10 years old in the 30s. He's close to 20 in the 40s. No, he actually turned 40 in 46. <coughs> so he's listened to big bands. He listened to big band music. Um, the Tommy Dorseys. Oh, yeah. The Glenn Millers. You know, and now think about it. A lot of my dad's music is written in, in B flat, E flat, G, C. Those are horn keys. There is a piano keys. My dad played a piano. Those are big band keys. He loved that stuff. I mean, also, really, really, he just adored Ray Charles. Absolutely adored him. It's going to sound funny because he's got, he came after him, but he really liked John Lennon. He liked Bob Dylan as well, but he really, he really liked Lennon's writing. He loved his singing. I mean, there was a show in, in the United States called The Mike Douglas Show. 
1971 or 1972. And John and Yoko were going to host or be the presenters for the entire week. He said, okay, I'll do the show if you get Chuck Berry. <laughs> yeah, I remember it. Yeah. There's, <laughs> there's some very famous photographs of that. In fact, the actual video footage. And my dad, after that one, he came back home and said, yeah, I just got to work with one of the Beatles. I got to I got to really work with John Lennon. He, he said he's a really good guy. I mean, he really, really, really liked John Lennon. Brilliant. Charles. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you with us here at BBC Radio Manchester. I know you've got a bomb off to London, yeah. but fantastic. Thank you so much for stopping by to talk to us. Thank you, Jamie. Charles Berry Jr. on BBC Radio All Manchester. Right. What a treat, and we hope you enjoyed that as much as I did.